Hey guys, this is Jules. I have a project to share with you guys today and this is an altered Smashbook cover. I actually altered the very front cover and the back just a little bit. <clears throat> this is the pink Smashbook. This is one of the first ones that have come out. After now doing the cover and I feel more like, oh, I do want to play in it. So I wanted to use Webster's Pages and I was wanting to play with this book. Uh, for just a few weeks now and uh, finally got to use it and I decided to use some of the stuff that I have from uh, Wild Orchid Crafts so this is an actual Wild Orchid Crafts project and I did a tiny bit of mixed media on there using some molding paste and some um, studio matte medium for gluing things some things down so I actually wanted to play off of the pink that's on there pulling in some of the greens the beautiful greens that's in some of the uh, Webster's pages, especially this particular collection, and bounced bounced off of some of this orange. So um, I did use some of Walter Craft's white seam binding, colored it up, and wrinkled it myself. And I'll be showing a tutorial on how to do that because I did have someone ask me how I do these bows. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to dye it. And although it's, I show it in a couple of tutorials of projects that I've made. Um, I have not dedicated one specifically for this, so I will be doing that. So yeah, I love it. It's so cute. There's detailed pictures on my blog and the links to the products that I use, okay? All right, you guys, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later. Jill signing out of the Jewel Box for Wilder Good Crafts. Bye, everyone. So I'm going to be going with Webster's Pages Trendsetter Paper Collection, and I'm using some 12 by 12 papers. Um, I think I used two or three different sheets from the collection to alter my smash book. Like I did the front and the back, um, used in the front and the back of a 12 by 12. I'm going to be using some gesso first to kind of prep my book. And at this point, I, I think I, I was just going to cover the front cover and just paint the back, but it just didn't look right. And I'll show you in a minute because I ended up covering the entire back with gesso. Sometimes I have some ideas in mind and other times I just wing it. <laughs> Here is the Studio Matte Medium and I'm liking this still so far. Um, I've already commented on it before on another project. Um, so I'm just going to glue this down uh, using the matte medium instead of Mod Podge because it tends to curl a little bit more with Mod Podge. And I don't want to use the liquid bottle like squirting it out because you'll get the lumps of the you know as you squirt it out. So this way it's a smooth out um, adhering or adherence and so I can just press it down and um, I don't feel any bumps with that. So I want to use that girl on, um, on that one sheet so I'm going to use the rest of the paper on the back side. I really like it because it just gives such a girly feel. I love the look of the mannequin with the dress. So I'm just going to add some more matte medium to the back side and I'm going to glue it down to the uh, back cover of the book. And you'll see there's a little bit of gesso still peeking out like onto the pink fabric part of the spine of the book. Not a big deal. I do end up putting some pearls back there. I'll show you in a minute. A scrap piece of paper here. Just measured it just so that I can cut a piece that will fit it up pretty snugly right from edge to edge. Some more matte medium and I'm going to lay it on a little thick because I am, oh and on the spine, uh, just because it is fabric, it is kind of a muslin kind of a feel of fabric on the book. So I want it to stick really good. So just giving it more of a shabby look, tearing the edges of the entire uh, piece of paper there of the scrapbook paper and I'm just going to distress the edges more and I'm going to tear it and curl a little bit here and there. The bottom of at the bottom of her it says trendsetter so I really like that. I can't wait to start playing with the book you guys. I'm excited now that I got it all ready and done. So I cut two pieces of this mesh but I only use one. And you don't see it too much. You can see it, and you'll see, be able to see it in the photos, I believe, um, the texture of this netting. So I'm just cutting different pieces off, and um, I do want to use this piece here. That says, Your Life Beautiful. 
and one of my Martha Stewart punches for a border. I want to have this stick out of the side of my girl there. Gonna add, I wanted to add that somewhere in there and it didn't work out. I ended up putting it on the very top part of the book um, and I'll show you that later. I think I do show that. This is one of my newest Prima masks. Uh, I don't know what it's called. It has a number to it and I'll have a, the link to that. There's my molding paste over on my blog. So I'm going to practice really quick on a piece of scrapbook paper, just a scrap piece of paper and using a, I think it's my Safeway card. I don't have a, I didn't have a palette knife. I just got one. So I'm just going to play with it to see how it's supposed to feel and I like it a lot. So I'm just going to go ahead and play with it here and add some to my cover. I should have added more in the very top part because I only got like half of the bubbles, but it's fine. It works out fine. I'm adding gesso now to the edges. And I'll be adding it here and there throughout my altering it. Now it's dry. And I'm going to use some Lindy's. And I can't remember the name of this particular color, but I'll have a link to that over in um, on my blog too. The lists of Wild Orchid Crafts products will be below the video here, but on my blog you'll have the, the actual links. So just want to drizzle it down away from the spine. And then I end up painting her blossom a little bit more with some Lindy's and it, it's the same pink but it darkens it a lot so it helps unify that pink with the rest of the pink that's on um, on the book or on the yeah on the book a little bit of gesso for that one strip piece there and I decided to go with adding some more of these bubbles or stones or whatever it is to the top corner and I decided to start just washing it right away as soon as I'm done with it because it was hard to get it off. You want to kind of get that off pretty quickly, uh, the molding paste off this, the mask. So this is Wild Orchid Crafts Jute uh, Ribbon. And this stuff is really cool. You can turn it into a wire mesh if you want to by painting it. And I'll do a tutorial on that later, uh, just a couple of different things you can do with it. So I'm leaving it pink. Uh, and I'm just going to trim it up so it's like all uneven. So it just looks like a just a, a piece of something that fell off of something. Some of Mr. Huey's. I love this spray. Non-shimmery, uh, but it gives such a powerful punch of color. And I love, love it. I'm going to be getting more, definitely. Great coverage. So I'm going the opposite way here. I am drizzling some of the leaf green down towards the spine. The pink is going is flowing away from it. I just wanted to be a little different, I guess. It doesn't have to flow down. So <laughs> oh there it is. That's the scrap piece. I'm just gonna put it up the top there. A little bit of just so just to whitewash a tiny bit. And the studio matte medium and I'm gluing down that piece of mesh. And I'm very new to the to matte medium and molding paste and stuff, so I'm kind of just playing with things. I want to get into mixed media a little bit more. Um, so I'm just going to dry it up a little bit. And uh, this is my chest, so I'm just adding a little bit more chest. So. Just toning down a little bit of the green, a little bit of the pink, but I still want it to show. So I do, I believe I did wipe some of it down. I'll probably skip through that. So here's some of my cheesecloth. I'm trying to figure out where I want the cheesecloth. So I did adhere the border, the punched Martha Stewart punch border, onto the side of the girl, the picture of the girl. And then I'm trying to put that mesh behind it. So using that same pink, I'm gonna do a couple of these rosebuds from Walter Good Crafts, and um, I'll I'll show you what I do with it in a second. So that there's no lumps, I do put a clump of glue and then I use my spatula to flatten down uh, again because I just don't want the clumps. 
and I'm gluing that down. Oh, such a pretty green. Goodness. It was, oh, I love that. I love the spray. So I'm going to glue down my rosette trim here. This is from Walter Good Crafts. And they've got a few colors available. Just gluing this down really quick, just a little bit, in case I need to tuck something else back there and stuff. So here is the two two pink roses and one white one, and I'm going to leave it just that color. I'm not doing anything to the white one, but I'm going to glue down the cheesecloth and twist my little stems and just get them all together and cut off the excess, curl in that the piece that's sticking out and keep it underneath there. And some of my little pearls, these are pearls on a string that I have in my stash. I believe Walter Good Crafts does carry them, but I didn't have any. I have the flat back. These are just some of the stamens from Walter Good Crafts. Using the white ones, just tucking them in between the three so it pops out like a little burst of berries. Just adhering, making sure that the little stamens is tucked down first. Just giving that security there. Make sure that they're secure. Here it is, Your Life Beautiful. And that's just a, a little, that's the title that I, that I cut off the very bottom of the web, Webster's pages when I was cutting it up. So I'm just going to uh, kind of tack it down with like a, like a little banner under the flowers there. And the leftover wa uh, stems, the wire stems, and I just curled them up and glued them in between each of the rosebuds. Some Jenny Bolin buttons that I got. Um... I'm going to use a couple of them. I'm going to use a very large one and then a smaller one. And I'm putting down some, uh, tying some bows. Uh, I believe this is the, yeah, it's the black one. The black and white one, because I use a couple different colors on this project. So the big one goes up there, and the little one is going to be glued on one of the chipboard pieces from Webster's Pages for this particular collection. This is some of the tickets, uh, fabric tickets for the, the Trendsetter collection as well. And I'm using the pink because it has a dress form on it and it says inspired and it's pink. So I put the button on the chipboard button and I just lifted it up real quick to give me some space for the seam binding. Now this is some of the seam binding that I made myself and I'll be sharing with you guys how to do that. Some of my Maya Road chipboard pieces, fun to play with and add into your projects. I really like the Maya Road stuff. You can find those over at my shop on my blog. Wilder Good Crafts has these halfback pearls in a, a few different colors, and I'm using the, I believe it's the white, and just using them for flower centers for my rose trim there. And this is the green twine, and I am, I just glued the little, glued it down to the back and uh, rolled it around. I'm going to roll it around. So I, I rolled it around to measure it and then I cut it off and I'm going to put the glossy accents on it and then let it dry. This one here, I'm going to add some Mr. Huey's Leaf Green again and heat set it. Now it's already been painted white so it uh, doesn't cover all the way but I think because um, I'm drying it like this is why it dried the way that it did. But it's fine because it looks more shabby so I like it. Some more glossy accents and let that dry. And then I found that these little, on the back of this paper, there's like these little doily looking things. Or, yeah, flower type doilies, like daisies or something. So I fussy cut three of them out. One of them is a little flat on one end, but it doesn't matter because I'm tucking it behind the trim. And then the butterflies. I cut out, I think, four of them. Fussy cut those out. I'm going to do a little whitewashing to them with my snow cat paint dauber, which I also carry in my shop. And then I'm going to use my Studio Matte Medium to glue them down. I'll do that in a second. Just trying to find placement for my, my road stuff. It's the little butterflies I'm going to tuck down, tack down. The little rose, that one I painted with the same Lindy spray in that pink. So here's the matte medium under the trim. They just look like little doilies. They're super, super cute. Just 
stuff it down there. And then I do end up going back to glue everything back down. Just little loose ends. Fun project. Fun, fun, fun. Beautiful brights. And with Wilder Crafts embellishments and flowers, you cannot go wrong with this, you guys. Some of the flat back adhesive pearls for the bottom of her skirt. And then I'll add one to the ticket down below in the corner. And here are the small flat back pearls on the string. I'm going to do two rows. Just do a dab, 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 and press down. And then we'll do the other side. And that just finishes that part off. Looks so pretty. A little crooked, but it was pretty. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I I am in love with this book. It's super pretty. A little bit more gesso for some shabbiness. And I'm done. Yay. My pretty pink smash book. <laughs>